reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sends me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, if you're wondering who the new face is here, my name is Deacon Matthew Knight. I was just ordained yesterday at St. Mary's Cathedral as a transitional deacon. And I'm very grateful to Father Corwin and to the Dominican community here for welcoming me to celebrate my first mass as a deacon here at Holy Rosary Parish. I have a long history with the Dominicans and the Dominican order. In fact, it was a Dominican priest who first suggested to me that I might have a priestly vocation. So I'm pleased to be with you all here today. I welcome also my friend, Father Michael Kelly, a priest of the Diocese of Yakima, and Deacon Dalton Rogers from the Diocese of Fresno, California, who will be ordained next Saturday, I believe, as, he, as a priest of Jesus Christ. Please join us for a Misa Cantata according to the Dominican Rite in observance of the Ascension of the Lord on Thursday, May 26th at 7 o'clock p.m. Cantores in Ecclesia will sing Palestrina's Misa Viri Galilei, and a reception will follow in Siena Hall. On Memorial Day, Monday, May 30th at 7 o'clock p.m., Cantores in Ecclesia will sing Fores Requiem for a solemn high Dominican Rite Mass to commemorate all the faithful departed, followed by a reception in Siena Hall. Also on Memorial Day, please note that the office is closed, Mass will be said at 6 a.m. and 12 p.m., and there are no confessions or exposition. Janine Applegate will retire from Holy Rosary Church at the end of May, and a Dominican Rite Mass and reception will take place on the 31st of May in appreciation for her service to the parish since 1997. Cantores in Ecclesia will sing Rheinberger's Cantus Misse for the Feast of the Queenship of Mary at 7 o'clock p.m., and all are invited to attend. Finally, after the Mass today, you are invited to a reception in Siena Hall. A word of gratitude to Rebecca Bauer for organizing that. And as usual, there will be coffee and donuts after the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
If you look in the pews in front of you, you'll see the cover of the Ignatius Pew Missal. It illustrates the exact scene that we heard in today's gospel. It's Holy Thursday in the upper room. St. Peter looks across the table and there's Jesus. Beside him is John, his eyes closed, leaning against Jesus' chest. Look at him, he's so young, so innocent. And me, St. Peter thinks, I'm an old sinner, a blockhead. Just the other day, Jesus called me Satan. No wonder Jesus loves him more than me. Peter notices something in John that he lacks in himself. We all notice qualities in others that we lack. My friend can always get a laugh. People light up just seeing him come into the room. My wife is so kind. I don't know what it is, but everyone just loves her. Father Corwin is such a great preacher. When he preaches, people listen. As we notice qualities in others that we lack, envy turns us inward, away from the other person. We tend to curl up around the hole in our heart, sulking over our inadequacy. Notice Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus and ends up gazing bitterly at himself. Like Peter, we long to be loved, but most of the time we live as if God's love is really quite conditional, as if love depends on us meeting some standard of perfection. And so we obsess over our inadequacy. I'm not funny enough, I'm not kind enough, I'm not good enough to be loved. But there is a fundamental law of the spiritual life. We become what we behold. The more we fixate on what we lack and spiral inward into shame and self-condemnation, the more we loathe and envy others for having what we do not. The inward turn suffocates love. The self-hatred we nurture will spawn hatred for others. And the downward spiral ends in broken relationships, isolation, loneliness, and despair. But hear what the Lord says to St. Peter and to each of us in today's gospel. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. At every moment, at this moment, Jesus, with true sincerity in his eyes, asks, do you love me? Then keep my word. And his word is simple. Follow me. Loving Jesus and following Jesus begins with a choice to turn towards him. As we turn to Jesus with a simple look of love, we find that Jesus indeed dwells in the innermost depths of our souls, deeper than our sins, deeper than our weaknesses, deeper than our fears, than our doubts, than our insecurities. God is with us. Not when we finally feel we're worth it, but precisely when we feel most low, most abandoned, unworthy, and alone. To follow Jesus is first to look at Jesus. And so, as the devil tries to get us to fixate on our inadequacies, we simply turn our gaze instead to the love of Christ, shining through them from within. In fact, we give thanks to God for our inadequacy, because those places of weakness are the very places where the radiant glory of his unconditional love for us shines forth most brightly from within. In the very places that we are inadequate, God allows us to see that his ardent love depends not on our merits, but on his goodness. And instead of shame, we begin to feel in those places the warmth of his love and the peace of his presence. The peace, as he promises today, that the world cannot give. Today, at this Holy Mass, Call to mind one place where you feel inadequate 
And as we receive Jesus in the most holy Eucharist, ask him for the grace to see the glory of his love shining forth from that very place. And the next time the devil tempts us to compare and despair, flip the script. We shift our gaze from what we lack to the light of Christ, which shines forth from within. Then affirmed by the unconditional yes of the love of Jesus, we turn back to our wife, our husband, our brother or sister, and we return a blessing. As we turn from darkness to light, and return blessings rather than curses, shame fades in us, self-loathing dies in us, and love and peace reign in our hearts. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light, and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. And one day, as we meet our loved ones in the kingdom of heaven, beholding together the radiant face of the one who loves us so well, we shall hear him say, well done, good and faithful servants, enter into your master's joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.